So in this video I'll explain what intercoder reliability is and why it's usually not a good idea to have it because over and over again I see uh, people being pushed and pressured into having intercoder reliability in their study. And it seems to be a very common misconception that in fact it's something that you need to do uh, to make sure that your uh, qualitative research findings are more credible or convincing. So first, very briefly, what is intercoder reliability? So this is this idea where you have several coders, several people, several researchers, usually two, but you can have more, uh, reaching some sort of agreement about their coding. So usually they start by uh, coding a little segment of the data and then uh, having this meeting get together where they discuss their coding and try to align it so that they come up with this code book that they will use to code the remaining parts of the data. Sometimes there are several such stages, they come back again and try to align again until they have some sort of agreement. And also there are specific uh, statistical tests that measure this intercoder reliability. So how reliable these uh, co uh, this coding was uh, between different coders, different researchers. And although, as I explained, it seems to be some sort of a tendency these days to have intercoder reliability, try to incorporate it in your uh, study, uh, there are many more problems, potential problems co connected to this practice than there are benefits. So let me just quickly explain some of the issues that I have with intercoder reliability. And I put these into a couple of different groups. So the first one has to do with philosophical misalignment and also epistemological issues. So uh, as you may know, uh, quite often qualitative research is grounded in uh, constructivism. So ideas related to constructivism, which means that there are multiple real, uh, realities. Uh, these realities are dependent on different people. So everything is extremely, extremely subjective. So as you probably guessed by now, these ideas are uh, at odds with what this practice of intercoder reliability seems to suggest, because in fact this practice seems to suggest that there is some universal or some common interpretation and we should try to, uh, to align our views, we should try to discover this common interpretation. And this also leads me straight to the second point that I mentioned, so epistemological uh, challenge of this, uh, there is this illusion of objectivity. So again, uh, this practice and focusing on, on finding this truth, uh, focusing on alignment between different people and how they see things essentially, uh, creates this illusion of objectivity, which again, as I, as I noted, is uh, not exactly what usually qualitative research um, believes or what qualitative researchers uh, usually tend to believe. And this uh, further leads me to another uh, related problem. All of them are related. So potential for oversimplification. So again, we're trying to reduce. So there's also potential for reductionism. We're trying to reduce all these interesting and emergent findings and interpretations to something, to, to one single uh, view of the world, which leads to loss of context. So we're risking that there is a loss of context. Again, we're focusing on this common interpretation. We're uh, closing all the doors for all the emergent uh, findings, emergent interpretations. Uh, you may have heard about the practice of qualitative research where you go back and forth in the data, you're looking at the data, potentially finding new things, discovering new things, reflecting. So here it seems that we're narrowing all that down by focusing on this one universal uh, truth, so to speak. So we're aiming for homogenization of interpretation and also this creates another related problem. So this uh, ethical uh, problem of uh, simply overlooking uh, some of what our participants potentially have to say. So we're missing out on all these voices that we, we gave our participants. That's why, like I said, it's, it's almost on the verge of being an ethical problem. And there are also methodological concerns. So the first one is over relying on this notion of reliability. So I should have maybe started with this problem because if you watch my other videos, I talk about validity and reliability in research and qualitative research. And I explain that reliability, many uh, researchers actually argue completely against this idea in qualitative research. They say that instead we should uh, focus on validity because reliability is simply, simply not relevant, not a relevant concept. Reliability is very much about replicability. And it's uh, very difficult to ensure replicability in qualitative research. And for this reason, to make sure that the findings are convincing, they're true, they are credible, we usually focus on validity instead. I do have, like I said, a whole video about validity. I explain what it is and how we can uh, achieve it in qualitative research. But here again, since we're focusing on reliability, we're usually ignoring this idea of validity, which is actually the more, uh, more important concern in qualitative research. And another uh, methodological 
concern or issue is uh, neglecting the idea, overlooking the idea of re reflexivity, which is another common thing in quality research. Uh, you should be reflexive, reflect on your and become aware of your limitations and biases and, uh, and influence on the research situation. So influence of the researcher. Here again, we're, uh, we're trying to reinforce this idea of being objective, of finding this truth, of aligning the views. So, uh, so we are sending a message that reflexivity in, uh, in fact is something probably negative, something to be completely avoided. So in short, most of these practices that have to do with intercoder reliability, they are based on quantitative research. Quantitative research, which as you know, is also based on completely diff uh, different assumptions, philosophical assumptions, assumptions about the world and therefore how we can explore it. These assumptions are very difficult to translate uh, to the qualitative research language. So in most studies, it will prove very difficult and problematic to uh, to implement this practice. So before you decide that you do want to have it in your study, just have a good think about it, plan it well, and just double check and make sure that it is the right decision for your study. So this is it. I hope that you learned something new. If you did, please like the video and share with others. If you know somebody who could benefit from this instruction. And if you're interested in the notion of validity and qualitative research, here is the video in which I explain what it is and how to achieve it.